I've been using this bike rack for two years and now I'm going to give you my honest review of it and also show you how to do the very simple installation. This is the jacket two bike bike rack from Leopard Components and let's go arrow. This is the third bike rack I've ever used on a travel trailer. The first two were for my previous travel trailer. That trailer had a two inch uh, hitch receiver on the rear bumper. So I used a bike rack that fit into that. Uh, that's when the kids were traveling with us. We uh, always had four bikes on that bike rack. Now, the first one lasted about two years. And uh, then I noticed the bikes were getting pretty banged up. There was uh, some damage showing up on them. It seemed that they were uh, bouncing and scraping against each other uh, while we were traveling down the road. As I was attaching the bike rack to the receiver on one trip, I noticed that the weld where the receiver and the bike rack met that weld was cracked. Now I have a picture here of my next bike rack, so it doesn't actually have a weld there, but this is the area that the weld was in on the first bike rack and that cracked right there. If I didn't notice that, uh, that could have made all four bikes just fall right off onto the road. Um, that would have been a, a very ugly situation, but luckily I noticed it and I stopped using that bike rack. Then I bought my second bike rack and this is it right here. And as you can see, over about two years or three years, the uh, whole main pole started to bend over just slightly, but it started to bend on one occasion. I was traveling behind our trailer, Cheryl was pulling the trailer, and I saw the bikes on the back and I couldn't believe how much they were bouncing. They were bouncing all over the place. I was amazed that the bike rack held up through that because it was some serious jarring. And I knew that we couldn't keep on uh, using that because it just looked like it'd be too dangerous. I then did a closer examination of the bike rack and I found this label on it. And it turns out the bike rack isn't meant to be put on the back of a travel trailer or a fifth wheel. So I got rid of that. We ended up selling that travel trailer and we bought this one. No hitch receiver on the back end and that's fine, I don't want it. So I was looking for something to put it at the front of the trailer where it's a lot less bouncy. I did a lot of research on it and came up with the jacket bike rack for two bikes. Now, like I said, I've been using it for two years and I am a big fan of it. I highly recommend it. However, it isn't for everybody, but we'll get into that in a little bit. One of the first things you need to be concerned with is, is this bike rack going to fit on your travel trailer? Well, the first thing you have to think about is your tongue jack. Will your tongue jack fit in this area right here? Most power jacks will fit in. Ours is a Lippert component uh, power jack, so it certainly fits in because this is a Lippert Components uh, bike rack, um, but other ones will fit in. Some might be a little bit tall. If you have a manual tongue jack, it can't be the kind that cranks at the top because obviously these bars are here and that's going to prevent that from cranking. But if you have one that cranks at the front, it'll likely fit in here. The next thing you want to be concerned with is right down here. It is a three bolt triangle system because what you end up doing is you take off the jack and you put the bike rack on and put the jack back on and bolt it in. To start this installation, we have to start by removing the tongue jack. In order to do that, we want to hook up to our tow vehicle and then raise the tongue jack all the way up to the top. Then with a 9 16th inch socket, you can take off the three bolts that hold it in place. Here's where you take this section. What you need to do is lift up the power jack and it's gonna be tight because of the electrical cord here. That's why I took off the uh, propane tank cover. So I needed a little bit of extra room here. And you pull this out. 
and it's out. Put this on. And you have to maneuver it a little bit. Now once it's on, line up all the bolts. And you can put your bolts in that came with the kit, as they're a little longer than the original bolts. You're going to put the, uh, the locking washer on, then the regular washer onto the bolt, and then you can feed it into the holes. There, it's nice and snug now. This is the most difficult part of the installation complete. So now we can lower the jack, unhook from the truck, get the truck out of here, and complete the installation. Now the next step is to put this piece on. You put it on pointing toward the back. That way the bikes are closer to the trailer. However, if your trailer is really close to this bike rack, you can also put it on this way where the bikes will be more directly over the trailer hitch itself, but that could get you very close to your tow vehicle. I'd recommend putting it on this way if you have the room. Now before I put this in, I'd like to point out that this is a hollow tube right here, and it goes right to our power jack spot here where you can take this plug out and you can manually crank the jack if it's not working. So if your power jack fails to work, you don't have to take off the entire bike rack to do it manually. You just need to take out the parts from here up. Now this piece just slides in. Again, it comes with a bolt, a washer, and a locking washer. The locking washer is closer to the head of the uh, bolt and comes with a cotter pin. The cotter pin is just there, just in case this were to shake loose. For some reason, the cotter pin keeps it in place. The bolt is a three quarter inch, so you use a three quarter inch socket to put it in. There's no nut required for this. It screws right into the uh, unit itself. Nice and tight. Put the cotter in in the back. Next step is to put the wing on. And it is exactly the same. Bolt, washer, lock washer, three quarter inch socket. And again, finish it off with the cotter pin. Next, we have the bike wing. They just slide on like this. Put in one of these. And that's on. Do the same thing on this side. And they're on. Prior to putting these bike wings on, I had already put these pieces on. These are the lower pieces that the uh, bicycle tires are gonna be resting on. And the top pieces, the hooks, that the uh, top of the wheels are gonna be sitting in. What I do is I put the uh, rear bike up higher because I wanna get the uh, pedals up higher so they're further away from the uh, front of the trailer as the trailer slopes that way. I wanna make sure that the pedals don't touch the trailer at all. When putting the bikes on, I put the back one on first. It gives me a little bit more room to maneuver, not having the front bike on, because putting the back bike on is a little bit more difficult than, uh, than the front one. You wanna grab the bike as low as you can, front forks, rear forks, pick it up. Now you have to tuck in back here. What I try to do is get the back wheel on first and just hang it on that hook. 
once that's on, I can do the front wheel, hang it on that hook, and it's on now. Then I can take the front bike, and I alternate the way it goes on. Again, grab it down low. Rear hook, front hook, it's on. Now it's a matter of strapping them down. And you want to ensure these pads are positioned correctly so that the bike isn't rubbing up against the bars. As you can see here, and the front pad is preventing the front fork from rubbing against the bar. And now we're ready to go. Beginning of the video, I told you this isn't for everyone, and you can see why. In order to put those bikes on there, you need to have a fair bit of strength and you need to be fairly tall. Now I'm five foot 11 and I can do it. If I need to, uh, uh, if I was a little shorter and I needed to, I can lower the trailer down a little more with the tongue jack. So it isn't for everyone. Um, you need to be able to pick up a bike up over your head to put it on that bike rack. And it's not very ergonomic, especially when you're doing the back one, because you have to kind of twist in there to get it up. But for me, I don't mind it because the bikes are very secure there and I can always see them in my rear view mirror. I'm very happy with it. I want to be completely upfront with you. Uh, this is not sponsored in any way. I'm not getting paid by anybody to do this review. This is a completely unbiased review by me on this product. I purchased it two years ago off of Amazon. I paid full retail price for it. This is my third bike rack for a travel trailer, and it is by far the best one. I'm very impressed with it. I would definitely recommend it. It keeps the bikes safe and secure. There's little wiggle. There's no damage to the bikes. The bike rack is very secure to the uh, trailer, and there's very little wiggle there. There's nowhere on it that it looks like there would be extra stress that could cause the uh, carrier itself to break. I think this thing will last for years, and I'm very glad I bought it. So this is a really bumpy road right here. And uh, the bikes are doing pretty good. Ooh, really bumpy here. That's the end of the video. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.